Hello, the everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Deficit Spending Lover, in which we're doing and playing as a CSR still, of course. And well, we are now at war with the good old Far Eastern Soviet Republic, but back to the economy. Um, yeah, as you can tell, we have a massive deficit right now, just casually seven and a quarter billion dollars in a deficit. Not debt, just a deficit. Uh, our debt is 15 percent, or 15 and a half billion dollars. Debt to GDP ratio went all the way up and went down, and well spending a lot of money even though all the spending does give us a lot of real GDP growth almost 15 percent very nice well uh, inflation reduction is at 1.464 percent which is not bad either so other than that we've just been kind of hanging out doing okay um we're still at minus 0.47 growth before we uh unpause the game academic base is looking pretty good we're at cutting edge research facilities mass mechanization functional administration for now industrial expertise is doing okay we got factory complexes and we also have a Professional army. And the only one up above that one is Spartan Discipline, which is very, very nice. But we must go in. Casualty so far, 1,000 losses versus 25,000. They have up to 19 divisions. We have 36 divisions, which are 5 motorized divisions, which are 20 combat width. And we have 31, 40 combat width infantry divisions, which are very, very costly, as you can tell. But you know what? Sometimes you just have to win wars, and which means you have to spend a lot of money, which is all right with me. You know, happens. Obviously, this place is not super, super, like, economically well-developed, but that's okay. And these guys are killing each other, too. Vyatka and... Was that Yeltsin? Oh, going about the hyd Kutsk Hydroelectric Station. Please go right ahead. Thank you. Ooh, 50% construction speed. Yeah, it was Yeltsin. Yeltsin versus Vladimir III. The Imperial Army marches forward, huh? Oh, are they doing the OFN? Oh, they're doing this one. Oh, that's actually really strong. This one's really strong. Um, hold on, what is this? Oh, they're an OFN observer. Okay, that's interesting. GDP goose... Growth boost. Oh my goodness. That's really cool. How about you guys? Nothing. Okay. You got a gun. It's quality small arms. Oh, I guess we're getting attack, improved attack helicopters just because... Hey, maybe we'll make those. Are we going to actually have enough factories to actually make those? Probably not, but you know, whatever. We don't have enough fighters anyways. But at the same time, we can still go ahead and invest in construction because why not? Other than that, not much else is really going on here. Pretty good. Severe reunification. Prepare the industrial centers as well. Actually. Huh. For this minute's time, you get more growth and output. We get slightly more inflation, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. Not too concerned about it. But yeah. 14.5%, not bad. Oh, we're going to go with war taxes too. Get a little bit more money. Eh, it's not bad. I mean, you can make a lot more money actually. But it really could hurt your growth quite a bit more. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not too worried about that too much right now. Get some flamethrowers. We've just been doing a lot of military stuff here anyways. Um, we're at, what, 31% for a conservative democracy. It's pretty good overall. Are we really lacking anything here? We've lost about 11,000, 12,000 versus 134,000 dead Russians. Uh, before we keep going on, or let time go on, whatever. They have 12 to 14 divisions. And they have no anti tank. They've got a few guns, quite a few trucks. They go, and they're, they're out of guns now. Uh, howitzers are, you know, losing them pretty quickly. Got some support equipment as well. Not bad. But yeah, uh, Tomsk is very strong. Very strong. Other than that, of course, nothing's really changed here either. And then over here, we're the most popular faction by far. And then we captured an airbase. If you want to go that, please go ahead. Great. Plus production costs? Good. We're going to need some radar for the future too. Very, very nice. Uh, armored expert. Oh, he is a field marshal. I'd rather do one of the field marshal things. I prefer him to become an organizer. In all honesty, do you have any extra traits? Honestly, I might just make this guy our field marshal. Yeah, I'll probably make him our field marshal because he can get just a wizard, which I think is very, 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 very strong. So, ah, but we do have a tank division, and this tank division has what? Oh, it's only thirty combo with. Okay, that's not that strong. Okay, not as strong as I initially hoped. Tanks, yeah, make him go to forties, and we want APCs on these bad boys too. So, nice. Uh, anything there yet? Not really. Don't want to convert any of that stuff yet. We have five. We do one more as well. Do we have enough APCs for that? Yes, we do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are going to be out of stuff anyways. What? Mm. Oh, screw it. We'll do it now. Yeah, you get to become Marshall. And this tank leader will become who? Alright, so you... Do that. It's fine. You are going to be led by... Good. We got a lot of artillery people here, huh? Trickster, ranger, improvisation expert, Mikhail. And you'll be led by Smoky Man. There you go. 
Logistics Wizard, uh, Throw Planner, Offensive. There you go. And now you'll be led by, what is this? Armor Leader? Oh, wait, that's an Armor Leader. Ah, oh, whatever. That's so hard to tell that's an Armor Leader. Ah, oh, screw it to it, anyways. You guys can train. I'm not gonna use you on the fields of battle over here. Nah. You guys, keep doing what you're doing. You'll be fine, probably. 190,000 have died. Is that all? Yeah, you guys keep it up. Keep up with the assaults. Don't let them move. What sort of manpower do these guys have? GDP is looking at just under 21 billion, which is not bad. Could be better, of course. 15,000 manpower. they got nine production units left. Not bad, not bad, not bad. And it's still 69. Very nice. Come over here. Logistic companies, yes. Expand the university system, yes. Do more stuff here, too, yes. Yes. And hire important instructors, because you can. I've got plenty of political power, because i got nothing else to do with it, so. Only 8 billion in deficit. Honestly, I might just go ahead and cut down all the spending, like cutting down the military costs. And convert them back to militia? Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe after the war with the uh, the guys over here. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. It just depends on how much debt we can have. We're at 140%, which is not bad. The war should be over relatively soonish, though. Also, what are we missing? We're missing guns. 6,000 guns. That makes sense. A lot of artillery, guns, all that good stuff. Trying to take out the Germans of Bormans could be probably relatively difficult, too. Especially without enough planes and such. Hmm. Improved worker training? Might as well. Keep working on that poverty, though. Oh, Black Power Revolution succeeds in Trinidad. Alright. Uh, they are about 73% of the way there, which is not, not, not bad at all. So, you're not allowed to lose. There you go. Oh, they are really giving us a fight here, aren't they? You guys are there. That's fine. Level 7 attack. Nice. Nothing there we really care about. Working on roads some more. Hospitals, prisons. Stability would be nice. Army bases, honestly. Western Mongolia. Army base? Why not? Make three more. Because you can. Because you can. Actually, if you want to take this tile, that would be smart. That's literally another victory point for them. So, third of a million have died. We've got 37 divisions. Not bad overall. Not bad. Flamenbrefe? Yes. Next level, yes. And do we win? Ah, yes, we have. Pull my uncaptured. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. The gateway to Russia has been secured. And go and get everyone here. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, I don't think there's really much else we can do here. We do have dockyards, but they do cost money to produce ships. But we can't make ships anyway, so it doesn't even really matter. We can do this one now. Um, unification of Russia. Siberian so unification. Get more stability. Naval XP. We know as a Siberian Republic. We do want to do that in just a little bit. I want to see if there's any more society development. I, yes. Yes. Pyro would begin to get even better. That's exactly what we want. Something like that. Uh, minus 0.4 is still very nice. So. 39 production units is definitely, 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 definitely not enough. Um, after mass mechanization would be modern agriculture, which gives you more pop recruitable population factor, 5% more consumer goods, 10% more monthly population, 2.5% more army regain focus, which is pretty nice. Can this get one more, maybe? Maybe. Uh, I don't think there's really a point for us to like delete the army and just change it up. That's not bad. 9% is still not bad. 22 billion? Uh, still pretty high, though. 5 billion. Military austerity. Uh, do we get any more guns or anything like that? No, guns are pretty bad, as well as artillery. Oh boy. Hmm. Just one more. Just one more, maybe. One more, maybe, please. Something about poverty. Oh, we're going up and actually dip down a little bit more. That's not good. Um, hmm. 0.72. Just army costs so much, man. Of course, this growth is definitely... Oh, 13% is definitely better than 9%. Let's see what happens. 19.122, then what? Because uh, it's almost near the end of the month. Or we are at the end of the month. 19.122, huh? 19... Holy, still under 20 billion still? Yeah, 19.6. Oh, 11%. Oh, that's better. And it just goes straight up, huh? Nice, very nice. Doing better logistics? Yes. Uh, nothing over there, but... Okay. Uh, we can do education, why not? And severe unification. 
Here we are, everybody. We have to be in 71. Oh, actually, this one. The bonus of Siberia plan will be reduced by 45%. The Republic of Russia. Prepare for the Unification War beginning in 71 as well. Ah, more production units. Yeah, thank God. Thank God. We need more. Uh, Go five and get some more consumer goods factories as well. Okay, so now that one done. Oh, we must accord everything then. Okay, that's nice. Uh, guns are looking okay, not great still, but okay. We need a thousand more artillery pieces and main battle tanks. So we're working on that already. Main battle tanks. APCs are fine. There's a fine SP artillery, of course. Well, let's begin to focus. If you like to buy the, into the atomic cage, please go right ahead. It's going to cost a little bit more money, but that's okay. What type of flag do we have? It's very weird. But hey, okay, we can still expand the university system. All right. 6.56. Inflation is still being reduced by 1.56% as well. Not bad, not bad. Um, honestly, end of wonders if you're going to that, please go ahead. Uh, how many divisions does each side here have here? 54, 40. Converting them would be just take so much time. We'll go 21. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to save some money here. Because these guys are all not not trained you. And this is probably stupid, but that's my attempt to do it like this. So there you go. Save a little bit of money. 8% is still not bad. Still have a deficit, huh? 0.29 billion. 8.8%, huh? Well, after that, after the Atomic Cage, if you want to read about what? Yeah, if you want to establish close facilities, please go ahead, because I've read these before as well, so there's that one. How far are we on, on research, though? Nine. Oh, we're not that, we're not that close at all. Deficit. We can do tax temp hike. Uh, what would happen if we did that? 0.74. That's still not bad. I, I want to start working on the deficit a little bit more, too. So, Or the debt, not the deficit. Well, I mean, we were working on the deficit, but still. Just, you know, a few months worth of time. I mean, we're just going to exchange supplies out. That's all. We can poop them out. And these militia divisions those don't really cost anything at all, so. Oh, yeah. It's going to hurt. Budget. Ooh. Oh, well, whatever. Establish closed facilities, please, and thank you. 0.35 billion more in debt, whatever. Now, yeah, what do we have here now? Ah, yeah. The League establishes their case. It seems the independents have once again begun to attempt to take down a republic's unique democracy, this time targeting the restrictive voter pool, which is one of the main tenets of Tomskian democracy. Created to give more privileges to the educated to vote on more important matters, it allows. <clears throat> Uh, the intelligentsia, a larger say in government. While the voting bloc is technically open to all who pass the entrance exams, the League for Expanded Democratic Rights, made up of mostly independents, has decried the past special voting pool as undemocratic and has mounted a legal case in favor of abolishing the voter pool. They say all people deserve the same vote, no matter their education. While it may sound sensible at first, the voter pool is very important for Pasternak's constitutional design, as one of the very ideals of our republic. Eliminating it could be very well lead to the end of the Salon system. Still, many citizens are supporting the move that the League is asking and making, especially people of newly integrated provinces. The case is expected to head to the Supreme Court, despite its lack of legal basis. Judges of lower courts have issued inconsistent rulings, and while this case could very could seem small first, it may very well lead to the fall of a republic's unique democracy. Tomsk awaits its fate. Still get a surplus, though. Nice. And 6.8% of growth. Not bad. <clears throat> and once more to the Pacific. Or we'll do Supreme Court to listen to argument against restricted voting category. We'll go to this one first. Our Russian military forces have given us a gracious gift of a coastal border. This new gateway to the Pacific Ocean means that we are no longer restricted to diplomacy and trade within Russia. With a proper navy and merchant marine, we can finally extend a hand to the rest of the world. Many of our foreign diplomats and merchants are excited for the opportunity to finally connect with other world powers once more. And we'll begin to looking to establish trade with outside nations as well. Very good. Supreme Court listens. Tomsk. Today, the Supreme Court has made its decision to hear the right the court case brought forth by the League for Expanded De Democratic Rights, <clears throat> which puts forth that the Salon style of go political governance is anti-democratic and fundamentally incompatible with the founding principles of the Central Siberian Republic. The League, primarily made up of citizens from newly conquered territories and those critical of the Salon system of political representation, has made significant gains in the past months for both membership and funding. Most surprising to most of the Salon establishment, many prominent humanists have made themselves available to the League, either as lawyers, researchers, or even as re representatives from other Salons, all in order to assist in the case being brought forth by the League's legal case. I believe, said one, that is it more immoral for a group of citizens to be denied because their ideology is beyond the uh, Salon style. For many, this is the first time they've encountered such a structure, so it's completely understandable that they would seek something more representative of their needs. The exact court date has yet to be finalized, but many Toms can throughout the Republic fear the political repercussions of the decision made by the Supreme Court, regardless of the outcome. A democracy for the elite, or a democracy for the people? <clears throat> How about no democracy, period? And we still get three political power every single day, holy crap. 
they listen to argument against restrictive voting category. Hmm, anything else here we want? It is, of course, almost 1970. It's so, so, it's so close that you must do this. Today, the Supreme Court has decided to hear the uh, 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 case put forth by the League of Expanded Democratic Rights that the Salon system of traditionally sacred cow the Central Siberian Republic is incompatible with the Democratic values of the League, which has had a hard time making it so popular with this citizenry, it, uh, with its membership ranks or roles having minimal expansion and mi limits of life funding to many in the Republic. The idea of getting rid of the Salon system of governance is shocking. I don't think it was real, began 34-year-old Chudov Nikolaevich, long-time member of the modern Salon. I mean, how else can we prevent so-called friends of the people from undermining our civil rights? In spite of its unorthodox style, the Salon has maintained its status as an important element of the Republic, with many incapable of thinking of the nation otherwise. Even many of the League, such as organizer Staroyev Alexeyevich, think that while the Salons are incompetent are competent and popular, although critical of the undemocratic and immoral ideas of those without Salon backing do not have a role in the government, so far few people are expected to closely follow the trial. So democracy for the people, by the people. And a casual terrorist attack in Italy, which we're not going to concern, concern ourselves with. Another production unit. Nice. Well, lots of anti-air, though. A working system. Tom's. Today, the Supreme Court has given its final decision today on the League of Expanded Democratic Rights today in favor of the special voting blocks, stating that the salon status requirement for ballot access is fully constitutional, and thus the majority of the plaintiff's case has been rejected. In spite of most, uh, uh, and many of the leagues are disappointed with the decision, but many report that the outcome is expected. We just don't have the public or constitutional support, really, said one anonymous staffer. We were always going to lose. In spite of the most central plot, or point, that being the special voting box is within the constitutional bounds, the Chief Justice's speech has drawn the most attention among both the league supporters and Salon loyal, stating that. This republic is based upon the values of democracy and all and all encompassing freedom. That is why we must do better, must do more, must never stop trying to listen to its citizens, regardless of political belief or prior loyalty, and only then will democracy flourish as it has around the world. It then argued for expanding the voter pools with a specific eye towards the legislature and executive branch. A nation of order or stability, and a nation of progress or reform, both are necessary elements of a healthy state of political life. The last of the reds. Slightly decreased coring, huh? The lost sheep. Free and open discussion. Pietro wrote furiously as the debate got rolling in the Grey Duma. It had been a busy couple weeks, with all the constitutional discussion and court cases going on, but even in spite of that, his editor wanted him to stick to Duma reporting. Typical Pietro thought. Still, it wasn't all that boring. The debate didn't just deal with the basic, moderate stuff, but with the founding principles of the Republic, but on the nature of their place in the constitutional structure of government. What many asked was the purpose of an upper house. The answer to such questions ranged from the humanist ideals of protecting freedom and the working man to the basilar cynical hatred of populism. Towards the end of the debate, one representative, a humanist, took the proverbial microphone going to the dais and giving a speech to his fellow members. Co friends, comrades, I speak to you not only as a representative of the humanist, but as a loyal patriot and citizen of Central Siberia, and a believer in the liberties of mankind. I speak to the belief that all men are created equal, and that any man willing to take away those fundamental liberties is an enemy of the people. That is what we are doing, protecting the people from the will of despots who would wish to take away their freedoms. But that alone cannot protect us, for it is only when the people lose their faith in democracy, in our constitution, and our institutions. Such men... Uh, can't even take power without faith that our leaders have our best interests at heart. Why would the people listen to us? The chamber went quiet. Even Pietro's pen stopped scribbling and looking down at the young man. I believe in the nation before Salon. Any honesty, well-meaning attempt to improve the faith of men and women of the nation is something I support, regardless of which side of the aisle they may be on. Many of my odds would agree with that sentiment. And the man left the dais, but the noise did not reappear. Crap. Did I get that all down? I know why I didn't. I'm only halfway here. Primary schooling. Secondary schooling would be good to get to next, too. More growth multiplier, maybe? Well, it's... No more negatives? That'd be good. Academic Golden Age would be nice to get to too as well. We're going for professional army. Really low. That sucks. What does it all mean? Boris sat at his table struggling to make sense of the borderline gibberish being spouted from his son, Mikhail. Son, please repeat it because I'm incapable of understanding what this nonsense is. There were many other words Boris could have used, but like his, but his wife, Ladia, would have given him eyes of pure icy disappointment, and Boris, of course, didn't want that. Mikhail sighed and again. <clears throat> Attempting to describe the subject, these are the four salons. And these are like what? Parties? Yeah, they each represent some aspect of modern society. Isn't that just what the parties already are? Well, Father, these are different. How? Well, the humanists believe in a humanity, art, and self-expression. The modernists, modernists are scientists and believe in progress. The Decemberists are conservatives who believe in protecting the land and our history. The Bastillards are staunch Republicans. All right, Boris began, believing he gained a minor's grasp. What does that actually mean for us, huh? Well, the humanists, no, 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 I don't mean what they believe. I am asking what in God's name do they stand for. Boris, his voice was raised now, his frustration building. What in the name of heaven are they going to do that helps us? Why can't they just tell us instead of giving me a lesson? Boris sighed, plopping into his chair. Father, said Mikhail, I'm sorry. No, said Boris. It's not your fault. I'm not literate like you. I think it is best that I leave this to a generation that understands what half this nonsense means. No, please don't be like that, Father. Mikhail, just give me peace. I'm done learning what any of this means. Maybe we should just go back to school. Maybe. 
Maybe. We got plenty of guns now. 48,000 guns is actually quite a few guns. Definitely more planes. Anything else in that? Planes and tanks. The normal stuff. Um, go down to three, maybe. Basic artillery, go down to five. So we can share the wealth a little bit more. Uh, get more tanks that way. Get some more, well, I guess planes eventually. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Um, since we're here, everyone's all these divisions will change to these guys. These guys are what? Change to APCs, slightly more armor, which will improve those guys as well. House selections, no one won or lost anything, which is kind of disappointing. I wish there was a little bit more there for that stuff, but whatever. Oh, I'll change them all to APCs because I love APCs a lot. Is this a bad idea? Probably. But oh well. Because these guys are 40 comp with, and these guys are 40 comp with, right? Yeah. These are the main groups that we do want to make. 437 is not much, but hey, it's better than nothing. And if you want to read about foundation for research, please go right ahead. Yay! Better logistics. Nice, 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 nice. Come over here again and get some better gun stuff. Yes. Now, what is this? So expand the Eastern economy. More growth, less, more inflation. The Great Discord. Ooh, mega project. The Last of the Reds. A conquest of the Russian Far East may have granted us access to the outside rule, but many radical communists still remain in the region. These men are living remnants of the former Soviet Union, whose NKVD officers purged many of the Russian intellectuals before and during the German-Soviet War. We should give these men no remorse, just like they gave our intellectual friends no remorse. We must eradicate any shred of communism remaining in the Russian Far East. Slightly decreased scoring time, slightly decreased political outsiders, increases cynicism, increases the of political party's policy effectiveness, and less communism. Not bad. Which, I mean, we have no communism here, but whatever. Expand the system. Yes, please. Looking pretty good. 0.65, not bad. 20.825. It goes up, and then going slowly goes down. GDP growth is going up 6.1%, even though we did do t attempt tax hike. So, it is what it is. And military spending would be nice to cut down, but we're not going to cut it down for now. Still building an army base up. Not bad. Not bad. Could be better, though. Lots of the reds. Uh, great Discord, we need all these stuff. Anyways, I lost sheep. Uh, political power wouldn't be bad. Uh, the wretches of Harbin. Warlords that rose up around the city of Harbin, however, this dangerous ideology, one that cannot exist in our democratic system. It is now our job to clear the fascists that once lived in Amur and Magad and to ensure the safety of our republic. In its place, we will plant seeds of hope and prosperity, and will lift up those who were persecuted by the fascist regimes that once spend the Far East. Pretty much. Pretty much. On that, looking pretty okay. The planes. Huh, sad. We do have a few airplanes, but just just not enough, man. Just never enough. Ah, uh, for slightly more armies, we can do that too. Oh, oh yeah. There goes uh Yeltsin. Well, the Russian Empire versus the Siberian Republic. And Finland's green as well. So green, green, green. And light gray green. The winds of change. Vasily had been attempting to understand for the past few minutes. Ivan was politically informed. Especially for a fisherman in Siberia, but every time we went into a nuance of the Tomsk political system, he only felt more hopelessly lost. Well, wait, Ivan. Explain that again, Nikita, and resting his fishing rod against the side of his boat. You said there are four men in Tomsk, and they meet in a salon and argue. But what if they don't agree about something? Do they just keep arguing with one another? And what if the two of them agree on something, and the other two disagree? Ivan was taken aback, but try not to let it show in his face. He nuzzled further into the folds of his coat. Well, they also disagree about how to break the tie he started. With some authority, one of them, Vainberg, thinks the only artist should decide on the fate of the country. So he sticks to his opinion even when he's, when he's outnumbered. Sakharov is the same, but he thinks that only scientists should decide. Vasily was peering at him with naked suspicion. Ivan sped up a bit. And the others are similar. Like a job, that's the December's one. He thinks we should all be farmers, so that's what he says in the salon. And whenever the others disagree, he gets into a real temper and calls them enemies of the farmer. And Carms, uh, the fisherman, faltered. For a second, they blinked at one another, hearing only with the water lapping in the boat and the wind. Ivan shrugged. I don't know how the Carm, what Carms want, Vasily said, but I know he's in the salon as well, and he argues with the best of them. Ivan was not really a cynical man, but when he tried to explain things to Vasily, he discovered that he was less informed than he thought. How can four men in salon decide the fate of Russia? We'll, um, we'll talk about their lost sheep instead. The military victories that we achieved in the Far East left many peasants without their leader, fatherless men. Father men, their anger does being abandoned. Uh, their anger being abandoned and exploited by unscrupulous tyrants is understandable. To stabilize the situation, we must first calm their anger. We can pacify men's followers by leading them toward Eastern Orthodox churches and slowly assimilating them into our society. Although it is their decision whether or not to participate in church, nevertheless, we can allow the radical teachings of men to bleed through into our great society. Of course, the sword. If one were to look up at the facade of any cinema theater in Sib the Siberian Republic, dazzling lights would be blinding the poor sot who laid his eyes on the myriad of neon lights set up for the screening of sword and shield. 
or Shoot on Sword, the movie adaptation of Kozinevskov's espionage novel. Truly, this adaptation should be called a massive success, as lines of people were reaching out, uh, seen reaching out corners, street corners. Though the book managed to awaken a slight feeling of national pride in readers, the movie managed to broaden its impact, perhaps even by setting it up to blaze even more so as countless citizens, inspired by the movie and its protagonist's struggles against the Nazi Reich, no doubt, started enlisting in service of the Republic, for the motherland needs all children to defend against it from further savages carried out by Germany. Where does the motherland begin? In Moscow, probably. Managing development, nothing there. And reunification, nothing there too. Happy 1970, everybody. Lost sheep, and we'll do the Great Discord next. Fractured left. Oh, lost sheep. Do we still have overextended administration? Yeah, we do. That sucks. Oh well, the Great Discord. Much of the past next salon based republic remains stained by political strife between different different parties. For a nation to progress, we must decide how to integrate the various political parties in order to reduce turmoil and produce a more unified government in this way. We'll end the confusion and step together in harmony. The military and Silvik. Huh. Idealizing the center. The fractured left. Counter reformation. A new school of thought. Defense or Mega Project. Ooh, that's not bad. Low noise amplification. Cool. All sorts of stuff here that we will need to do eventually, but let's get some more tanks and APCs. Because no one here wants to make garbage. 20.992. Oh boy. 20.992. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we can keep paying it down. 7% real growth is not bad, too. Trying to modernize it. Good job. 1.6 reduction in infrastructure, or inflation, I mean. New school of thought. Um, Bastelards, or support authoritarian democracy. As much as I want to do this one really badly, increases GDP and growth. I think we'll just, the fractured left as well. This was not bad. The counter reformations and poverty will begin to improve as well. I think I've got to go with idealizing, idealizing the center. Our end goal is to ultimately integrate everyone within reason into our political system. Independence of nearly all strats should be encouraged to share their ideas and wish not as outsiders, but with a salon which most closely matches their personal ideology. While we cannot expect every single person to sort themselves cookie cutters down in a salon in an instant, we can of course encourage some people to focus on things other than politics. We can definitely help people voice their grievances in a manner where they will actually be heard and where we will be more readily be available to respond. That's a matter of practicality for us and for them. A new school of thought. As means of further integrating all sorts of people into our political system, we should encourage the formation and growth of new political philosophies at our universities and all across our realm with the ultimate aim of guiding these unique thinkers into one of our four salons, essentially. While allowing both and advocating for individuals to voice their own political thoughts, while simultaneously directing them subtly towards our existing system, we can strike a perfect balance. We'll demonstrate our flexibility and desire to listen to the people's w all the w people's will while still maintaining the status quo at the end of the day. The Great Discord Speech There is a great discord in our very republic. A political turmoil which has constantly threatened the very existence of our nation and our unique form of governance for years, since long before we even reunited the old territories of the CSR. Every single person here knows exactly what I'm referring to. Our salon system is utterly incapable of dealing with outsiders. This unity is plaguing us. It's slowly killing us like a, the venom of a snake. But we're simply ignoring it and allowing the lifeblood of the country to slowly drain out of it. So many cared nothing for what our government does or has lost faith in us ages ago. So many more still wish to belong to some other rival state because of their ideology is so much better than ours or they miss their dear leader. This is a severe problem, but it's not impossible to solve. We can integrate people from all circles into our system. The independents, the majority of the radicals, the cynics, the Leviki, just about all of them. But some of them are scared. Some of us are scared to place a power in jeopardy. This is about the good of the Republic, not your desire to keep your seat in the chamber. Start, so start acting like it. I need a great many plans to put an end to this great discord, but we need everyone fully committed and working harder than ever, maintaining the legacy of Pasternak so that it stands forever across Russia is far from easy. Let's get our hands dirty and get to work. Strongly worded, but on a point. The December's government has decided to launch a great project, ending the great discord. This project seems to once and for all end the lingering effects of separatism in central Siberia, as well as build solid mechanisms to integrate new territories into a political system. President Lakachev and his ministers have determined that the rise in cynicism caused by those who do not trust our political system the greatest threat to Pasternak's legacy as such. Considerable efforts must be made to sit our political revolution on stable grounds so that our expansion westward does not stress the system any further. This is a great undertaking, and citizens observe it with interest. Failure to bring about a successful completion of the plan could have negative consequences on the people's trust in the government. Current progress towards ending cynicism in the Republic is 0%. Monthly gain is 0 0.05. Invest a lot of money? Yes. Enact the Culture and Practice Protection Act. Mend the urban-rural divide. Yeah. 
Uh, sponsor an apolitical faction. There you go. We have nothing else to do with our political power, so might as well, right? All we have to do is continue expanding the university systems. We have nothing but universities here. The Petrov Salon. It's expansion of stability. Anatoly Petrov stood on the street outside the Duma and Tomsk and realized how long it had been since he last seen it. Before he joined the military, at least. It seemed an eternity ago before his eyes had been opposed to the narrowness of the view promised by each salon and before he developed his own moral center. He felt more peace than ever, and in truth, the ability to avoid factional arguments in his unit has earned him a rapid promotion to sergeant. But within his own family, he remained alone in this regard. His mother had not been able to stop talking about the Decemberist Grand Plan, an enormous social endeavor focused on uniting the Siberian peoples and ending general cynicism in the government. Cynicism, perhaps, like his own. It promised great improvements in the social fabric, but in truth, what did that mean? Homogenization of diverse opinion? A quiet enforcement of doctrinal orthodoxy? The authorization of, the, of those such as he? He did not voice such thoughts to his mother. She would not be able to understand and would argue against them. Besides, his father and sister provided more than enough of that in any case. Anatoly looked at the Duma for another long moment and then turned to leave. He knew so, that so much of what he was said inside the building was irrelevant. The conflicts of those who could not see the flaws in their own position or the merits in those others. Much like his, like his kitchen table, they in both instances focused only on the idea. Anatoly would focus on the person affected by it. A solidified direction. I apologize that I'm speaking very quickly. I'm just kind of used to it at this point. I speak very quickly. Very, very quickly. Tanks, 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 tanks. Helicopters, though. Not bad. The Great Symposium. Um, increases idealism. Forging ahead alone. This is the last ability. Hmm. I want to do that one. Uh, forging head alone. Hmm. Slightly increases cynicism. Honestly, we can probably take the head here. We increase idealism, but we don't need the, we don't need the political power, honestly. But it slightly decreases this. I don't want her stability, but stability is probably honestly extremely good already. So no matter what route I take, I'm sure someone's going to not like it. So, um, forging head alone. We could do that one. Oh, let me do this one first, too. Ah, oh, forging head alone, why not? The Decembers were the ones who transformed a measly Tomsk into a strong and powerful Russia. We've already taken a republic this far, industrializing, reconquering, policy making, developing a people's culture. With our hard work and uniquely effective ideology and philosophy, we would, you would be nothing. There's simply no time and no reason to ask the other salons for assistance as we continue to move forward and put an end to the nation's political crisis, after all. We're the only salon that is well and truly in touch with the wants, needs, and feelings of the Russian people, which sounds exactly like the wrong thing to do. We should really do this one, but. I'd probably do this one realistically, but we're gonna go this one, why not? Just because we can. Oh, we still have a deficit? Oh, that's not good. Ooh. Oh, because we tax temp hike as well. Ah, why not? It hurts by 1.2% for real growth. But getting a surplus, cutting, maintaining this is kind of my goal right now. If you want to about to improve academic base, please go right ahead as well. Very nice. Something to be celebrated. Good job. A new era for the Republic. The wave of political independence and cynicism has been a pain in the rear ends for a darn long time by now, but not long less. After many months of intense campaigning and hard work, our great Discord project has come to an end. After announcing the, this to all of Russia, we shall see how we fare in our efforts. Anything else down here yet? No? 1.75% for monthly gain. Towards any cynicism is 15.25%. The great Discord. If not completed within 1400 days, cynicism will sharply increase. When completed, the idealistic nature of the Republic shall be secured. Actually, how are we looking here? Still pretty white, pretty white. And even white down here across the north as well. Expand the Eastern economy. A new channel to the Pacific has been opened for us, and it's time to extend our free market economy to the easternmost border. We must develop these lands just like we developed the original states, by building factories and starting new supply chains. There is much or plenty of potential to be found in these new eastern provinces, and we must treat both men and nature with respect as we bolster the regional economy, which sounds like a good thing to do. But if you would like to read about addressing the uranium problem, please go right ahead. It's a 28-day focus, which does take quite a while, but that's okay. Sometimes you need to go out for it anyway, so. And it's only halfway through the year. We're, ha we're less than six months away from going to war with uh, those good old people over in the Russian Empire. Hope I don't think we can peacefully reunify. I'd love if we could, but I just don't think we can. I'm waiting for expanding the university system once more as well. Still, minus 0.28. Didn't we start at like 66% like poverty rate? Something really, really just got awful. Look at that, 32% is not bad, though. Administrative efficiency, we might get that one done, maybe. Oh, here we go, yep. Even more research facilities. 
Cutting edge research facilities. Oh, we already maxed out? Oh, we already maxed out on that. Oh. Cutting edge research. I thought we weren't there already. Okay, so then there's no point doing that one, right? So we're done. I'm done clicking on that university one, so. It is what it is. Bread from the home front. Uh, not bad. Arms for the soldiers. Where are we for agriculture? Nah, it doesn't matter. We can do the agriculture one first. Bread for the home front. We're always in need of more food for our people, and it's imperative that we improve the current food situation in the conquered Far East. We shall work to expand our farms in to the region, produce more farming tools, and import food from other world markets to ensure that our citizens are fed and, of course, quite healthy, which we get uh, slightly increased popularity of our party or salon. Uh, in rural areas, our agricultural societal development will begin to improve, not slowly, but normally improve, and slightly increases minimal investment in social funding. Not a bad thing at all. So yeah, we're done with the university system. Invest him in for a million dollars. Cool. Yeah, we don't need to lower our stability anymore, so close that one up. Thank you. Planes are not bad. Get some of this too. Yeah, she gets some better planes. But we can continue to work on this stuff as well. Ten million dollars is literally nothing. Twenty percent, nice. A little bit ahead of time. Special forces, tanks, artillery, better artillery in general, and SP artillery. Arms for the soldiers. Unless oh, we have another research slot. No, no arms for the soldiers. Our newly conquered eastern lands and Pacific border could be a beneficial to our military development. We should use parts of the acquired eastern resources to construct weapons for a liberation army. Now that we have a post in the Pacific, we can visit the outside world and discover new methods to develop stronger weapons, and who knows, we might be able to return with patents of our own. Research for uh, sport technology, infantry weapons, slightly increases minimal investment in the army funding. Not bad. I know, visit Uncle Sam. Our entire governmental system was partly influenced by that of the U.S. of A. And many in our population look to the Americans as a true savior of democracy, a beacon of hope for uh, the world. Now that we've expanded our influence uh, to a large part of Russia, we have the opportunity to send our leaders to the U.S. This is currently our best chance to establish a friendship with Americans. And they may be able to assist us in creating a democratic Russian state. Research facilities and district equipment begins to slowly improve. Excellent! Modern agricultural industrial stuff? Good. 9%. 0. 0.47. Not bad. 22.9%. A little high for me, personally, but, you know, whatever. Of course, then again, you get, we got to remember, we already cut down our army expenditures like, by a radical amount, so. Independence for them? Well, good. Good luck. Good job with that. No one cares. Minus 0.25. A visit to Uncle Sam. But, event? Military parade. Shapshnikov and Likachev watched from afar as a parade of oddly clad and heavily armed soldiers uh, marched along uh, one of Tom's main roads. The colorful neo napoleonic uniforms were really odd, but they certainly stood out. Those are some impressive weapons they have in our arsenal, commented Likachev, gesturing towards some modern tanks and self-propelled artillery pieces. Yes, replied Shapshnikov, but these are really the easily the best equipped men in the entire army. There's still very much work ahead before we are ready for any major conflict. That's good to know, General, but at the very least, the people will be reassured of our strength and glad to see the men who fight for our public up close. There's definitely value in that, Mr. President. It's something, and soon it'll be more than something. Yeah, it'll be more than something. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Uh, you know what? If you want to read about expanding the Siberian mines, please go ahead. We'll get a production of uranium down here. Very nice. Of course, we'll need to source four materials, but we can wait on that just a little bit. My goodness, do we have so much political power? That's so nice. So much. I have so much PP. So nice. It's just so much PP. Nice. Very good. And if you want to read about even better research facilities, again, again, and again, please go ahead. God's cutting edge research facilities. We can't get any better than that. Lobbing adventures? Yes, please. Mr. Rostow said Gregory Sverdorov. Sverdorov. Thank you so much for meeting with me. Although I am a composer, my government has tasked me with trying to find support for here uh, for a claim on Russia. You should have, shouldn't have any problems with that, said Walt Whitman Rostow, one of the more prominent figures in the American National Progressive Party. There's a bunch of people here who would, who would wish to see Russia united under strong democratic government such as yours. That's honestly the best case scenario for the U.S., and plenty of politicians will gladly support you. Sviridov was intrigued. Do you know anyone specifically who could be of aid? 
Well, Walt took out a pen and a uh, scrap of paper. Well, there's two major ones I know of, he said. Scoop Jackson, that's the one you want to see. He's a big MPP foreign policy guy. I'll support you. You folks fit in his qualifications. You like freedom, democracy, capitalism, and you aren't making any bones about giving Fritz one to, one to the nuts. Very good, Mr. Russell. Now for the RDs, there's a guy who will make sure you want to be your friend. Name's George McGovern. I will talk with him, and you'll get just along fine if you want good relations with America. I'll give you some more RDs who will want to be your friend as well, and if you have any food problems, he'll help you on that too. We are not without friends, it seems, and a new Far Eastern fleet. Our expansion into the Pacific Territory requires us to gather whatever we have into a ragtag navy capable of ensuring our naval supply routes and defending our coast from invaders. We might be able to salvage what was left of the former Soviet Navy or old warlord air ships that remained in good condition. It would be our first step towards developing a competent Russian navy to patrol our coasts. We have more naval XP, which doesn't do much for us. Four more dockyards. Slightly increases a minimal investment in naval funding, which I'm glad we have nothing in the navy because that would be a waste of stuff for us. Two, three, a quarter, a quarter of the way done for the Great Discord. Not bad. 0.89 is a bit too much for me. But 10% growth, not bad. Not bad at all. Inflation, what are we doing here? 1.752%. Nice. Up to 3% total reduction. We're not quite at 3%, but we'll take whatever we can grab right now. Infantry anti-tank or anti-air, I should say. Not bad. 70, 70, 70. Oh, yes. That, that's plus 10% more. It's just so nice to have. 10.4% is pretty good. 26 billion is not enough, though. Um, as soon as we hit 71, or get closer and closer, we're going to just convert the divisions and train the other group around as well. Which would be pretty good, actually. The Great Federation. Yes, we are inches away from being the one and only Russian Republic, but there is reason to be celebrated even before the reunification is finalized. We're in a very strong position to be the nation doing the aforementioned reunifying. As a political crisis, it's at an end, and we've developed the means to stand alone as a geopolitical force in our own right. We have shown the world the light and power of the democracy as we promise, and it is now time to spread freedom to all and bomb, drop bombs and roll tanks upon the tyrants of the world, for Russia and for democracy. As the Middle East is literally blowing itself up. More money! Uh, we need more hospitals, maybe. Hospitals! Finished. M more advanced APCs, very nice. Ooh, a little bit of lag, but whatever. There you go. Oil crisis, not our problem. 0.42 billion surplus, still not our problem. But if you'd like to read about source for materials, please go right ahead. And then, as well as chase the sun, not bad. Increases cost, yeah. And billions of dollars, plus 0.15 for 90 days. Better industrial expertise is not bad, though. Let's grab some of that, too. We want to make sure that we're producing some really good equipment here. Actually, how much do we have on this one? It's a bit too much there. Maybe, about, ooh, maybe not one. Yeah, keep it at three. Keep it at three for now. Because we're going to need a lot of improved anti tank. Point 23.235. Ooh, we're not even having a task hike either. But we still have a surplus. Hmm. Never mind. 12%. Go back to down to 10%, please. 23.235. 23.235. 23.235. Nice. So we actually went up. That's not good. Eh, so about 10%. The Great Federation. Source for materials. And I have a pretty good feeling we won't be able to peacefully unify, but we will see. Well, everyone, here we have it. Unfortunately, we cannot peacefully reunify with the Russian Empire, but uh, the Russian Empire is pretty difficult. Pretty flipping difficult to try to kill off. We've lost 120-some thousand men while we've killed 200,000 ourselves. For some reason, their soldiers are extremely, extremely strong. Like, it's kind of ridiculous how strong the enemy soldiers are. But they, these guys, I do believe, are at what? Spartan Discipline, right? Yeah, they're Spartan Discipline, which is a... I don't know. Vyatka getting Spartan Discipline seems a bit odd. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it just seems a bit odd. But as you can tell, we're, we, we're struggling here a little bit. We're definitely struggling here. It's not a great war against these guys. Of course, it doesn't help that our guys are all green. But by Because I wanted to try to save a little bit of money. But at the same time... It's a little difficult. A little difficult. Um, not anything else. Not really much has really changed, honestly. Um, still pretty much all normal stuff, so. Uh, can we move in here too? Maybe. Maybe not. Get a little bit of support. I mean, it would help if we actually use our tanks, but our tanks are looking pretty bad. I tried using them as well, but they just did not perform that well. So, yeah, no. If we can just beat the crap out of these guys, that'd be great. Come on. Come on, keep killing them. Literally just keep killing them. Literally just, as we would say, kill them all. We lost. 
Jesus, flipping, flipping. Tons of manpower, just tons and tons of manpower. Um, get some of that too, maybe. We could work on our line air doctrine too. Looks like they're missing some sort of equipment. Obviously, they're not missing a lot, but at the same time, this is not going great for us. Yeah, I just don't understand. Like, we're just losing immediately. Do they have air superiority? They have a little bit, but our planes are still here. So, I don't understand why we can't still win. Um, even if we try general attack, it still wouldn't be worth it. Let's go ahead and try to get an intelligence agency, since we're going to need one eventually anyways. I don't understand how we cannot win there. I mean, obviously, are we lacking guns? We might be lacking guns, maybe. We're lacking tanks. we got enough anti-air. we got enough anti-air equipment and anti-air. Uh, Anti-tank is looking bad. Artillery is looking bad. Guns? Eh, that's probably part of the reason. Guns are not looking very good, either. Um, anything down here? Artillery is not good. No, not good, not good, not good. Jets are okay, as well. And they just don't seem to be attacking. Which is, I think, a massive issue. Like, if they're gonna... They went to war with us. Like, I didn't go to war with them. They went to war with us. We have 9% inflation. Holy crap. Uh, air superiority. We'll do that one. Yeah. Uh, our debt to GDP ratio is not very good. Deficit is 11%. Why is inflation just so god awfully high? Oh, my goodness. Tax hike, maybe it. It's gonna hurt us a little bit, but whatever. Yeah, they just refuse to move. I don't understand. They were attacking like crazy earlier, but now they're just like, nope. All but one going, maybe? Maybe? So we can do 40, 70%. Should be able to win, right? Like, what is this on this motorized? There's like 20 combo width ish. Ish. This is honestly really stupid. I don't like how beefy these guys are. I, maybe I just don't understand. Maybe I just do not understand. Why is Vyaka so difficult to get or to break? Why do they spar discipline? I'm mean, gonna get their Imperials, I suppose, to a degree, but like. They're not like Himmler soldiers. Or. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know my Vyaka lore that well. But it doesn't make any sense why they'd be this strong. It eludes me as to why they'd be this strong. Oh my god, trying to make tanks is so impossible. Can you actually win here? Is this our own tile? No, that's Omsk. Awesome. It's their own tile. That's fine. Just very coordinated attacks. Look at, look at all the damage we're doing. And we still lose. Yeah, I don't believe so, son. Sorry, I don't believe in your poppycock. I mean, that's... That's a lot of damage. It's got to be a lot of damage, right? Am I wrong? I could be wrong. I don't know. The whole production unit thing, it makes sense, but I, I kind of prefer the old way of the whole civilian factories, military factories. It makes things pretty easy to understand. Oh, we didn't even win down there. Okay, I don't care about Iran. I really don't care about Iran. How many men have we lost? 154,000 versus 260-some. That's just ridiculous. Why can't we win there? My good God. Oh, another attacking. Look at that. Now they're attacking like crazy there. Which is nice and all. Are you guys attacking here? Yeah, you go in. If they're attacking, how, 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 how? This literally makes no sense. Look at all the entrenchment. 53% entrenchment if we're not moving. 50 flipping 3%. And it's still not enough. Yeah, I know. Vyaka needs a nerf. They really do need a nerf. You should be able to win here pretty easily. Very easily, actually. If they're attacking us, ooh, if anything, you should go right there. Force the attack. I just don't care anymore. Force it. We've got more than enough anti-tank and piercing and stuff on each division. At least, in theory, we should. 400,000 have died. Middle Eastern Pursuits. You guys are going to end up dying there because the game is programmed to have Vyaka extremely strong for literally no reason. Literally no reason at all why they're so god awfully strong. Ridiculously way too strong. I mean, it's one thing if they're like in the first stage. Ooh, yes, go in. Go in immediately. But like this stage, they should not have Spartan Discipline. Almost no one should have Spartan Discipline, if anything. Go right there. They should be encircled and should be killed off. Just go in. At this point, I'm done trying. I'm done. If we kill off half a million manpower, then so be it. We'll make things work in the end. I'm not going to tell our cheaters. That's such cheating. Guys. Guys. Go in. How, how much more manpower do they have? Five to six thousand. Well. They're all about to die. Just like our own soldiers. 
I mean, Vyaka, why did you want to kill off over millions of Russians? Because over a million is going to die by the time we're done here. Definitely going to be dead by the time we're done here. Um, I don't know if we'll actually be able to get a cryptology deciphered by this time, but we can try. We can try. It's incredibly stupid how strong these guys are. With no air superiority. I and mean, we have air superiority now. Like, makes no sense. I mean, it's not like we have like a really disjointed, god-awful military as well. We do really t relatively okay ourselves. We have a professional army. That's still pretty good, right? Apparently not. Apparently not Torino's. A few more production units are nice. 300,000 of doubt on our side. Uh, military factories. And I have five more there, too. Um, anything here? Not really. The Ranger, though, that's pretty nice. Not gonna use tanks, they're just, they're just garbage. Tanks are just garbage in, right now. Well, you can't win, you're gonna hold. 400,000 losses, 350,000. The economy is doing extremely poorly. Yeah. I don't know, I don't think the whole economy thing is really working as intended, as, as well as it could. Especially for Warlord Russia. Hmm. I mean, how can the enemy support this many divisions? Without the economy being, like, just really wrecked. 71 divisions max. 59 to 71. And I get that not all these divisions are, like, extremely, extremely costly. I mean, some of them are, like, militias and stuff, but... Come on. It doesn't make any sense. Give them a little more time. Let them waste themselves on our line. 700,000 have died. Just ridiculous. Forces, go over there. Keep working on our stuff here. Yes, yes, yes. Right, at least we got an increase in admin efficiency, though. If you're about that again, please go right ahead. We live in the managerial age after all. Nice. Yeah, after this, we're cutting down way on the debt. Way, 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 way. Not going to attack at all. Well, we don't have enough command power to do a force attack, so let's go with the bridge if we can. They have no manpower, so any losses we inflict, they cannot replace. We luckily still have at least a quarter million manpower left. And it's still slightly mobilizing, too. Should be able to win up there. I mean, look at how weak those divisions are. And we still can't win. <sighs> Gotta love it when the... It's, all just, it's just all screwed up. It does not make any sense. Literally makes no sense. Just arbitrarily giving them Spartan discipline makes literally no sense. Who in the right mind? If, if these guys can't win, why, why can't we win? Look how weak these divisions are. Something is not right here at all. Can we can we win there? Can we at least win? That's ridiculous. I'm probably, you know, at this point, I'm just going to give myself manpower or something like this. Because the losses that we have make literally no sense for a nation that does not have or should have Spartan Discipline. Or anything this strong. They don't have air superiority. We have air superiority. We shoot on all the enemy planes the best we can. Our divisions are literally the best you can make, for the most part, at the time of this recording for Toolbox Theory. Arbitrarily, they're just given super strength. It makes no sense. Makes literally no sense. Th out of 30,000 guns, yeah, no. The AI is cheating. They gotta be cheating here. Can seven divisions beat three? Apparently not. How does this make any sense? Terrain. I get it. Terrain. Not easy. It's, it's only force, though. With no organization, they can still, you know, stop us in our tracks. Oh, this is an event. Development stage, nothing's happened there for the elections. Uh, do some other stuff too, because we can. That'd be nice. If I track here, we're going to lose. We're going to lose instantly. Level 7 forts too, it sucks. Can four divisions take out two or three divisions? No, they can't, apparently by themselves. Are they using elite infantry? Because if they're using elite infantry, they should be constrained like us. Yeah, I'm going to give ourselves like 200,000 manpower, something ridiculous. Because this is just so stupid. Hmm. 
They're still holding out so easily against us. That just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. I get it, it's marshes. But overwhelming numbers, overwhelming numbers with a relatively okay military. I mean, how, how? How are they able to hold out this well against us? With literally no manpower. Literally nothing. I get it, it's winter, but still. How? They're fighting over a river, and they're still able to slowly lose against us. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, but the devs have a definitely a Vyatka boner. And it's just unfair. It's completely unfair. It doesn't make any sense. Going to ding-dongs. We're going to lose here? Excuse me? Yeah, no, 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 no. How? 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 Do they have forts? It's only level two forts. They have no strength. They've got no strength left. And they're still able to hold us, hold out against us. I don't understand how. Usually it's air superiority that's a problem, that I always forget about. But it's not. It's still not. Oh my god. At four divisions can barely take these guys out. They just don't die. Why do these divisions suck so much? Three, four, nine, got plenty of anti-air, just in case. Still not good enough for some god awful reason. Um, yeah, this is stupid. This is incredibly stupid. Can you beat one division with using five? Barely. You can. Uh, wow. Why? How many? Okay, so their divisions are look like they're like eighty combat with with that many. Up to fourteen infantry divisions. Up to another ten infantry battalions. I mean, so up to fourteen, up to ten, and up to six. Obviously, it's not going to be that big, but, like, how? Are they using, like, 80 combo with divisions here? That's, like, the only explanation that they could have. The AI cheats so hard in this mod. It's not even funny. If we even tried this, we're going to lose instantly. Yeah, there's no point even trying. I don't like it when the AI cheats. I really don't. This is so stupid. You cannot even win. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six, six divisions. Six divisions are trying to kill off one division here. Who designed this? Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't care if that the research was ahead of time. I mean, we're kind of running out of things to research anyways, but still. Look at that. We can barely win against one division. One division. It's ridiculous. AI cheats so hard. I'll go this way. I'd love to do a general attack. Make this easier for everyone here. But yeah, at this point, I'm just going to use console commands. I mean, why not? The AI is clearly cheating. Clearly cheating. Streamline bureaucracy. Control opposition. What do they have here? National spirits. We got more war support. Even though they declared war on me. Encryption, decryption. Uh, imperial constitution. Strength in numbers. Which is a complete lie. A complete lie to us. Open universities. Nothing there. Special forces stuff. Which they must have gotten the extreme multipliers for something for like putting um, elite infantry in the divisions. Which we got nerfed because we can't put enough, we can't use elite infantry that much. It's basically just like mountaineers. White army traditions. Well, I don't see anything on defense here. So why are they so strong? There's literally no reason why they should be any that strong. Is Iran or part of Iran? Mm, 
That stuff is all okay. Come over here, nothing over here. 72, I'll grab some of those. Well, everyone, it's now August 18th, 1972. Our GDP ratio is looking a little better, just because we conquered more territory, but this is, this is ridiculous. 600,000 losses versus 1.15. They have one division left. Somehow we managed to beat them back and then just to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And it's not fun. It's straight up not fun. I don't understand why the devs made it this difficult to take out Vyaka. Now I get it. Vyaka's starting situation, one of the worst in the game. God awful, surrounded by lots of strong enemies. But it should not be made up for having an extremely strong, ridiculously strong endgame. It makes no sense. Why they'd be so strong here in the end? Like, why? Just arbitrarily? <laughs> BS. Complete BS, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Vyaka needs a stronger starting position. Because the way they do start, it, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to start off as Vyaka. But in the end, they should not be the strong. Absolutely not. We ran out of manpower. We started with like 900,000 men. We have none. How? Why? I don't understand why we can do so poorly when, when I think we're doing pretty darn well. I mean, you know, we have a professional army, like I said. We don't have Spartan discipline, you know, so be it whatever. Um, our divisions are 40 combo with the correct, you know, generally somewhat approved of, you know, template meta for this type of PNO. Um, but yeah, like, what else was I supposed to do? Air, we had, you know, a good amount of air support. Maybe we didn't have air superiority the entire time, but. For a lot of the time, we definitely had air superiority, and so it didn't make any sense why we were losing the war. We had plenty of ground support as well. Of course, we were losing tanks, but the tanks suck, and they're just not very good at all. As much as we're trying to make them better and better and better. I, I don't understand what the devs are thinking when they make Vyaka so ridiculously OP. Like, they're just overpowered. They're literally overpowered. You can't do anything. And I'm not sure what else to do, especially when you don't have an industry. But, regardless, let's go ahead and reunify the motherland, which it's really pissed me off, as you can tell. But... You know, it is what it is, the new Russian Federation. Having first completed or first become the unexpected victor of the struggle to claim control of the Central Siberian Republic, the Tomsk based idealist republic of poets, academics, and scientists has gone on to defy the world's prognosis by outlasting all its rivals on the path of Russian reunif reunification. Led by President Dmitry Lekhachev and his December faction, the Kyrgyz Republic's rotating constitution currently gives the new Russian Federation a government at the intersection of old and new. Its free willing, classically liberal economy operates under strict environmental laws. The December Salon has sought to try to strengthen the bonds between old rural Russia and its modern industrial cities. The triumphant army of the Republic now turns west to seek new friends and challenge old foes for the liberation of all Russians. The century of humiliation is reaching its end. All right. Wisdom and growth. Cool. Let's continue going on. And let's see. We're going to get two more things of that. And I... You know what? I don't care if these guys are experienced. I'm converting them back. Because the debt is so bad. It's just so bad. I'm not going to tolerate that type of crappy debt. Just, uh, actually, you know what? I'm actually converting some of these guys back. Let's just have at least one army of, like, normal 40 combos. Because we need to take out a couple different nations here. Which hopefully won't be too bad. But you know what? With the devs doing funky stuff. With giving people Spartan discipline when they don't deserve us. Or don't deserve it. You never know what to expect here in TNL. Oh, look at this. That's all satisfied, huh? Not bad. Keep building that stuff up. Um, do we anything, have anything else here? Cynicism crisis? Spend university system? No. Usually that says that we're now done with uh, coring things, or, you know, that's the end of the campaign. Of course, we still have a good Discord, so I guess we're going to end it here. There's no end yet, but I guess I'll see you in the next episode when we take out, or maybe I'll have already taken out Central Asia, maybe Vladivostok. And get ready for the war against the Germans, who hopefully won't be as bad as taking out Vyaka, an over overpowered nation at the end stage. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when hopefully we'll have the great Discord done. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.